When we think of the Earth's carbon cycle, we tend to ignore what's beneath our feet. We seem to forget that like oceans and forests, soils also live and breathe. The top few centimetres of soil are the basis of all life on dry land. Soils contain more carbon than all vegetation and the atmosphere combined. As fossil fuels and shrinking forests overload the atmosphere with excess carbon, what part can soils play in a solution to global warming? The answer may lie beneath the rainforests of central Amazon in yellow soils long ago turned black, known by the locals as terra preta. If you live in the central Amazon, you can't avoid uh, bumping into terra preta. These are anthropogenic soils, man-made soils from way back before the Europeans arrived in the Amazon. The evidence is there and that's what drives us. Along with bits of pottery, the ancient soil is mixed with charcoal. What makes the charcoal different from your barbecue is that it comes from wood burned in ovens without much oxygen, a process known as pyrolysis. So this char organic matter in this terra preta is much more efficient in doing what we want all soils to do, to retain nutrients for plants, to reduce the CO2 that goes out of the soil, to enhance soil productivity um, and store more carbon. This old idea has motivated scientists to develop a new technology, which they call agrichar. Restoring the carbon content feeds life in the soil and increases respiration. Adding up to 10 tonnes of agrichar per hectare reduces the amount of carbon dioxide given off while tripling the weight of the crop or its biomass. For the last 10 years, Bonnie Walker has been bringing her soil back to life. We want to see an improvement in soil pH, maybe improvements in soil structure, uh, water holding capacity, the structure of the agrichar is very porous, so this is going to create a lot of surface area for nutrients to hold on to. The fertilizer you do put out will stay there. The challenge is to make enough agrichar. But it's Adriana Downey shows off the agricultural benefits of char with a demonstration corn crop. 3A here, we have chicken manure char in the soil. So char, no char. But the main attraction here is the pyrolysis plant. It cooks biomass without oxygen to make a renewable fuel called syngas. The black waste left behind is exactly what the soil scientists want to use as agrichar. One person's trash is another person's treasure. Today, they're using ordinary garden waste. The kiln is heated to 550 degrees by burning the syngas. So it's actually our own energy that we're producing in the plant that we uh, are firing it on. The win-win is that half of the carbon in the biomass makes the syngas fuel, while the other half stays in the char. The amount of agrichar trickling out the end of this pilot plant won't change the world but making it on an industrial scale certainly could. And because the energy comes from plants that absorb carbon dioxide as they grow, better than low carbon or zero carbon, it's actually carbon negative. Behind this international conference in New South Wales, mild-mannered soil scientists are politely plotting a global revolution. One of the most important things we need to do when we actually start to build this initiative into a world movement, as it were, is to actually relate it directly back to individuals. The IPCC has said soil carbon sequestration is a proven means of mitigating greenhouse gases. The Australian of the Year is right behind them. Your technology offers the possibility of taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere via plants, permanently sequestering that carbon in the soil. Now we don't know how big the potential is for using this globally, in other words how many gigatons of carbon we can sequester, but my suspicion is it's large.